This is Small Biz Florida, the podcast designed and produced specifically for Florida small business owners and entrepreneurs. Small Biz Florida, talk that works for Florida. This podcast is supported by the Florida SBDC Network, providing the tools, strategies, and expertise to help Florida's business community thrive. Visit the Florida SBDC online at www.floridasbdc.org or contact your local office and get started on your path to success today. This is Small Biz Florida, the podcast and broadcast that's all things business across the state of Florida. I am Tom Kennard, your host for Small Biz Florida. And for those of you that tune in on a regular basis, you know that our little podcast platform here is all about getting information out that can assist and help small business owners and operators across the state of Florida. One of those important issues always for small business owners and operators is access to capital. Uh, Everyone needs access from time to time uh, to help start grow and expand their business and we have got one of our most important and favorite partners and collaborators in this capital access space it is our good friend mark cruz with florida first capital uh mark welcome back to uh small biz florida thanks tom it's great to be here again thanks for having me on absolutely we appreciate it we appreciate the uh, support. We appreciate the collaboration. We appreciate the innovative programs uh, that FFC provides the entire state of Florida. So we, we appreciate your work. Thank you. And we appreciate the partnership, the longstanding partnership we've had with the SBDCs around the state. And uh, it really just is a great uh, collaborative effort to serve small businesses together. Yep. Uh, agreed. Um So uh, what we want to talk about today, some pretty exciting stuff that happened in this last uh, legislative session. Um, There were some um, new uh, laws that got signed into effect. Uh, Some of these uh, were supported and uh, promoted by Florida First Capital to help tighten up some some issues surrounding uh, specifically the uh, SBA 504 loan. And correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong, Mark. But um, the uh, those there there was kind of a some sweeping uh, laws that that affected a lot of uh, tax issues regarding lending. But specifically for our conversation, we're kind of focused on that 504. I think the uh, the law helped with some uh, uh, double taxation issues, and uh, it all went into effect. It's going to go into effect July one. So. Um, Correct me and fill in all the gaps that, sure. that I didn't I didn't cover there, uh, Mark. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so we were uh, fortunate to become part of the legislature's annual tax package, um, and the tax package, as you can imagine, uh, covers a lot of different areas that the legislature and the governor were interested in providing tax relief to consumers, um, and a whole host of areas. The list is too long to actually do uh, here, but very. Uh, helpful to consumers, uh, businesses, and in our case, we brought uh, forward this idea of eliminating double taxation in certain uh, structures of SBA 504 loans. And I can go into kind of the details if you'd like on that, Tom. Yeah, I guess to start me with real quickly, um, I have, I'd like to think I have some um, deep understanding of the 504 program, but just give us kind of a quick overview of the 504 loan itself, purpose, uh, use for the 504. Sure. So uh, the 504 is, uh, so Florida First Capital's mission is economic development and job creation. And like Tom has us on here for is access to capital. And that's, that's how we provide service to small businesses. Our bread and butter program is the Small Business Administration 504 loan program. And that is, uh, it's a great program. It can be up to 90% financing for a small business owner. Uh, so they only have to come up with, with 10%, which helps them keep as much cash in their hand to operate their business. And the 504 can be used for fixed asset purchases, meaning if they're in their uh, building and they're renting and their rents are increasing, they can uh, uh, attempt to purchase the building with a 504. Uh, if they're a manufacturer or or they just want to have their own space, they can use the 504 to purchase the land and build a building. And for uh, small business manufacturers, it's fantastic because it can also be used 
uh, for long-term machinery and equipment. And the advantage to it is it's uh, below market uh, interest rate. It's for a fixed period of time, uh, usually uh, 20 to 25 years. And uh, so it really uh, is a great tool to help the small business owner, like I said, keep cash in their hand uh, and and have a below market interest rate, especially in this uh, uh, market environment that we're experiencing. All right. No, it is an excellent program. And I think, you know, before you and I went on the air, I was telling you, I've got a got a couple of clients right here along the Treasure Coast that we are um, we are working our way through uh, 504 uh, loans with Florida First Capital. So let's talk about specifically uh, this legislation. Sure. How did it help to maybe uh, address some issues with inside the 504 program? Sure. So and uh, the way the 504 loan is structured, as I mentioned, it's up to 90% financing. 50% of that is the fir a first mortgage lender uh, does 50%. So you, the, your banking partner is going to do 50%. The SBA does the 40%. However, the SBA has to sell bonds in order to fund that 40%, and that doesn't happen immediately. So there's an interim loan that's in place until that happens. In most cases, the first mortgage lender who does the 50% will do the interim loan. And when you go to closing on those, uh, under this circumstance, you would pay your doc stamps and in intangibles on both of those loans. And then when the uh, interim loan was taken out by the SBA, you only paid a taxes those taxes on the inter incremental increase. There's some fees associated, obviously, with closing the SBA loan. So it's a very small incremental amount that you would pay when the interim loan is taken out. However, when, uh, for whatever reason, sometimes that first mortgage lender prefers not to do the interim loan, and a different lender does the interim loan. In that case, uh, and it, we spoke to Department of Revenue, and this is why we had to get a law change. In that case, uh, when the interim note, uh, you pay your taxes on the first mortgage and then the interim, but when the SBA came in, a new note was issued, and so you were paying the borrower was paying the entire amount of tax on that full amount again, and the incremental difference. Right. So it really, when I was talking to staff, they were like, lots of folks like to explain to them that this is a double taxation situation. It's usually not, but I was told this is actually a double taxation situation. Right. Okay. So, and I, if you'd like, I can explain what the, I mean. That's yeah. what we were trying to correct. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. And so when I, when I, you know, when I started talking to legislators and uh, Chair Stan McLean on the House side and uh, Chair uh, Blaze and Golia, the uh, chair of the, the Senate Finance and Tax Committee, when I started explaining it to this to them and to their staff, it really, uh, it wasn't a, a tough sell, frankly. Right. <laughs> and because, you know, there's not a big lobby promoting double taxation on the no. other side. No, so, no. Um, it was, you know, it's one of those situations that's been in place for years and years. It's just how things have always been done. Um, and you you kind of kick yourself and say, well, maybe now it's the time to try and change that. Right. And the legislature, the, like I said, the, the chairman and the members we spoke to could clearly see, you know, why are we doing this? This We, we can fix this. And fortunately, it made it nice. into the House package and then the Senate package. And then when they compromise, you know, there's always a compromise package. Uh, fortunately, they kept it in that final package that went to the governor. Right. And I guess just from a good old small business uh, perspective, I, I'm, you know, it's just it's nice to know that there's an organization like Florida First Capital that recognized a problem. Uh, created a solution and got it before uh, the legislature to to and, and like you said, it's easy sell, but somebody had to get it there. It, it is it you know not for you know having an organization like Florida First Capital. How many things get looked over, uh, get overlooked like that? Right, and you know, and uh, fortunately, you know, it's going to have impacts going forward because you know, as you can imagine, most uh, projects, uh, folks. Uh, bent themselves into pretzels to try and make sure the first mortgage lender was also the interim lender because you don't want to have to do that. And now the the structure uh, can be flexible uh, going forward. Um, so it, it's not going to matter who is the interim lender. 
Uh, and so if, if, if the first mortgage lender isn't, for whatever reason, just doesn't want to do the interim, right. it really it re re eliminates that impact. So it's going to make it, it reduces the risk to the first mortgage lender because they're only having to do 50%. The other mortgage lender is only doing 40% for that interim loan period. Um, so it, it, it's reduced risk for the lenders. Um, it's going to be reduced cost, obviously, to the borrower. Right. Um, so we're really going to, you know, feel like it's going to, in a, a meaningful way, can help with you know job creation for small businesses throughout Florida. Right. So again, in short, the the, the tax package as it relates to the five hundred four eliminated the requirement for additional um, documentary and intangible tax, with basically transferring that note from the original lender to 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 the. The SBA. Yes, exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. It eliminated that double taxation occurrence. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, and and again, you guys, um, Florida First Capital, uh, you know, again, correct me on some of the the, the data points here, but forty years, uh, you guys have been operated, and you really are one of the nation's uh, top ranked uh, CDCs. Um, you know, and you're you basically operate not just in Florida, but Alabama, uh, Florida, and Georgia. Uh, is that correct? We and Al yes, you said Alabama and Georgia. Yep, yep. Alabama we sure and do. Georgia. We do yep. Florida, Georgia, okay. and Alabama. Um, we, you know, thank you for letting me. Uh, you know, talk about us. I always like to talk about us. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, listen. Um, we've top three. We were recently one of the, the the top three CDCs in the country for the past seven years in Florida. We've either by volume or dollars been the top SBA 504 lender in the state, actually, um, not just for CDCs, but the top SBA 504 lender. Um, so, uh, you know, we've been in around the state, uh, founded it in 1983. Uh, it, it spun off uh, uh, about a decade later, and is, we've been self-funded since then. Um, and so uh, just got built great partnerships over time. Our CEO, Todd Kasurik, you know, started this with about Two employees, and uh, we've we've grown from there with, you know, uh, several offices around Florida and our right. staffing around, uh, you know, as you can imagine, Florida and Georgia and Alabama. We're really just starting our operations in uh, Georgia, but that's not as relevant to this conversation. <laughs> yeah, and 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 just so folks understand, because um, and let me make sure that that I say it correctly too. But but normally uh, a, a borrower a client of, of yours kind of works through a local lending institution. Is that uh, how they engage with you? Start with a local lender. If it is a 504 loan, then that local lender can connect uh, the deal to Florida First Capital. Is that how that works? It, it, hap it does happen that way uh, in, in many cases. But, you know, if a, if a small business owner doesn't have a, a lending partner, okay. uh, you know, we'd love for them to reach out to us. And we certainly have those relationships that can help connect them with a lending partner. Okay. Um, so it can work either way. If, if they okay. have a banking relationship, we're certainly going to work uh, with, with them and, and their banking relationship. But happy to help uh, if they don't, because obviously right. we build partnerships with, with lending institutions over the years as well. So so it can work the, the other way too. They can contact you, uh, start the conversation, then you could connect them back uh, to a lending partner that was pot exactly. potentially in their region, in exactly. their area of Florida. Okay, and, nice. Uh, and we, we sort of talked about it uh, offline, but we uh, the State Small Business Credit Initiative is also one of the things that uh, comes into play. I'm sure folks heard you know that uh, came out and yes. Department of Economic Opportunity uh, is is uh, responsible for that, and we are helping them deploy those funds. And it's actually used as for the portion that we're doing is used. Uh, the state can come in and do that bridge loan uh, for the 504 to do the interim. Uh, so the the you actually would only have a the first mortgage lender in that case, and the state would fund the interim until the SBA came in. So it really reduces the risk to that first mortgage lender. Uh, because the state's covering that amount. Um, and so it's been a, a super effective program. Uh, we've uh, deployed, not, de not uh, obligated, uh, over uh, 50 million uh, of those funds uh, to date. We started about the beginning of the year. Um, so it's, it's been a very popular program. Um, okay. But we also uh, work with the state on several other programs. We uh, are finalizing some of the deployment of Hurricane Irma relief that was provided by the Federal Economic Development Administration through a loan program. 
and uh, also for Hurricane Michael. Um, uh, and so we, we work with those and we also have a recycling loan program as well that we've had for many years. So we have wow. 504s are kind of our bread and butter, but we also uh, have another other, uh, other types of programs that can assist small business. And, and many times we do them in combination with each other because right. – some of the hurricane uh, loans can be used for working capital, whereas the 504 is for fixed asset purchases. Okay. And I know, uh, like you said, we kind of touched on it before we went online here, but uh, I, there are lots of folks. There was a lot of promotion that went on with the SSBCI State Small Business Credit Initiative. Uh, state was given some money from the U.S. Treasury uh, to to really the, the goal of that money was to close the gap. Uh, for small businesses to to access some capital, and I know, um, uh, as I told you, we've um, in our region um, we've closed two loans leveraging that SSBCI money, and we have two more uh, in the pipeline that we hope to close soon. And it really it allowed a small business owner, uh, you know, solid business, good cash flow, uh, you know, profitable, but they lacked the collateral. So sure. it was, it was, uh, you know, it was the perfect opportunity for that business who probably wouldn't have normally gotten the loan because of that lack of collateral. But the SSBCI program closed the gap on that collateral and the bank did the deal. Yeah. DEO has run a, done a phenomenal job trying yeah. to get the word out um, because it really can fit these circumstances where, you know, we really, you know, we don't want to leave those small business centers may not have everything in place that they need. Right. That's why these programs were developed to help them, like you said, close that gap. Right. Um, so we've had a, a great partnership with with the, with the department on these programs. On the, I would say the bridge program, and they've been working to to help get the word out on the programs you just described. Right. And again, um, it goes without saying, Florida First Capital, you know, you, you noted it, one of the top 504 lenders. I've and may be the top 504 lender in the state of Florida. But but again, really the, the go-to organization for that 504. Um, and I don't want to put you on the spot with any numbers, but what, what does that space look like in terms of 504 lending? Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars a, a year in 504 loans in the state of Florida. What, is that, what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I would say, I mean, uh, it's, it's a significant number. How's that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and so... You know, we have, there are other, we're not the only CDC in the state. We'd like to think right. we're the best, but there, you know, right. there, there are others that we have a, a good relationships with. It's good com comp competitive relationships, if you know what I mean. Right, right. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's, we're, we're putting out lots, millions of dollars in SBA 504 loans right. a year right. for sure. And again, those loans are allowing businesses, you know, access to the capital needed to, develop, purchase equipment, do the kind of things they need to expand and grow operations. Absolutely. It's it's, it's perfect opportunity for, for commercial property purchases. Uh, long, like I said, it's, it works great for small manufacturers because we can also uh, finance the long-term machinery and equipment. Uh, so it really uh, is an effective tool and, uh, you know, love to work with, with, with borrowers and banks to, to help help them know about it and use it. Yep. Well, you know, uh, there's no, no problem here, Mark. We'll be, uh, we'll be calling you uh, as we always do. I, <laughs> I was, I think I was on the phone yesterday with, uh, with Brenda, who, uh, who is a, um, one of your, uh, one of your team members at Florida first capital. So trust Absolutely. me, we, uh, we have her number on speed dial. Um, and so all of this goes into effect, as I said, July 1, and this is only making a, a great lending program that much better and affordable for small business owners. That was a great way to, to encapsulate it, Tom. Yep. Exactly that. Thank you. Yep, yep. absolutely. Uh, it is our good friend, Mark Cruz, uh, with Florida First Capital. Uh, again, Mark, we just, I can never say enough about the support for Florida First Capital, Todd's support, um, you know, for the SBDC, and uh, and certainly as you pointed out earlier, the, the the great partnership and collaboration between our two organizations to to provide innovative, unique assistance and resources to small business owners. Good deal. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I see us. Uh, I'm looking forward to the conference in August. Uh, yes. And uh, but again, we've it's just been a, a very 
a long standing uh, partnership with us and I uh, look forward to continuing that success. So thanks again Absolutely. for having thanks again for having me on. And and Mark, thank you and the FFC team for for again being that that watchdog, being that organization that looks out uh, for small business owners and and operations and and uh, taking our issues to the legislature. We appreciate that. Absolutely, it was a good experience, and uh, you know, really, really glad to be able to share a, a, a good story. And was very appreciative of the legislature and the governor, of course. Uh, for 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 signing that uh, package, so yep. it turned out uh, turned out very well in the end. Okay, uh, again, it is uh, our good friend Mark Cruz with Florida First Capital. Uh, Mark, how does one uh, find Florida First Capital? Uh, our website is ffcfc.com. Okay. It's the easiest way to reach us, or eight hundred five zero four loan. All right, is our phone number. Love it. All right, Mark, thank you. We'll see you at the uh, Small Business Success Summit uh, right there at the very last day of August. Uh, no, excuse me, last day of July. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks. Take care. Yep. This is Small Biz Florida. I am Tom Kindred. Uh, we're, we're coming to you from uh, our home base here at uh, Indian River State College, located right here on the treasure coast of the state of Florida. Uh, today's conversation with our good friends at Florida First Capital is all about uh, small business and uh, the need for capital access. Uh, as always, tune in, stay tuned. Uh, always more to come from Small Biz Florida. This has been Small Biz Florida, created and produced by the Florida Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. Your host for Small Biz Florida is Tom Kindred. Partners for Small Biz Florida include WPSL and WSTU and Indian River State College, named the 2019 winner of the Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence.